Hi, welcome to Kingdom Metalworks. So here we go with the third video and we're going to uh, start wheeling the shape. So I put this through the uh, lead shot bag with the bossing mallet, went over to the stump, blended and smoothed, so now I'm going to shape. I've set up the wheel um, basically with a flat top wheel. I like a flat top wheel. It's one that is not completely flat, it's shaped with a little flat right in the centre, as you can see, there's a witness mark to it. You can see that this one is about a three and three eighths uh, distance. And at the same time, I'm looking at the profile gauge to see what kind of shape um, is in the panel. And it's, it's around about a number four radius, roughly, give or take. Um, so therefore, I'm thinking, well, we, we need a wheel that's around about that same radius. I'm going to end up utilising the sharper radius wheel uh, eventually but this is a process so we'll jump in the English wheel and the process is that I'm going to use the lead shot shaping wheeling flexing my reverse curve in and then we're going to work on the other side and the procedure will be stage one, stage two, stage three. Then we'll come back in again, stage one, stage two, stage three. And progressively, this panel will start shaping up, the valley will start dropping in, and the uh, uh, stretched, stretched side will start shaping up to conform to what we want. So having said that, why don't we just jump in the uh, English wheel. Uh, like I say, I used the radius gauge to give me, uh, basically it's a, it's a 375 radius wheel. The other one is 325. It's an English um, um, designation on numbers because it has a little flat in the center. It has a three and three quarter radius towards the edges, but the blend line between the center to the first part mm, is, is around about a four, somewhere in that margin. And it's the very, very slight part gives you the ability to give you a, so then we're just going to uh, shape it up and wheel it up. So as you can see, I. I put my panel in and I can feel my pressure. It's a little bit of pressure, not a whole bunch. So I'm just going to start from the top. Notice I'm not wheeling right on the very, very edge. I'm wheeling just inboard of the edge. And so having doing that, I'm then coming down and through, minding my fingers, and I'm controlling the panel. It's going to wobble around a little bit because of all the uh, mallet marks, but then it will start ironing out. And that's the whole thing with the English wheel. It's a very methodical, uh, very, very vintage machine, capable of, of, of just ironing and blending. So I'm just taking my time. I'm not rushing. I'm just enjoying the shape coming in. And notice I'm coming down through just to iron out the shape, coming up and around. And notice I'm following the lines of where I need it to go and I'm not running over the no hit zone. So now I'm going to start wheeling back out again. Notice I run out on the back edge That's because I want it to be relatively straight. And so, as I put more shape in the front section with the English wheel, I'm running the shape back, but I'm keeping an eye on my panel so that this doesn't drop over so much, so that I'm keeping it relatively flat, as flat as it needs to be. And that's just the procedure that I got the student to do when he made this one up. And as you can see, we've got a little bit of a crown, and then we've got a little bit more shape going up through this section. And as we're wheeling, uh, we're paying attention to the panel. As you can see, it's, it's um, starting to take the basic very first st stages of shaping up correctly to what we want. The more I run it through the wheel, the smoother it becomes. So now I'm just going to put a little extra shape in front, just to blend and smooth, and I'm going to stagger 
my strike marks so I don't have a shaped sudden drop in. So I'm going to go long and short, long and short, just to get a little bit more punch shape in there. And I'm going to dial my pressure up just a taddy. See, didn't take much just to start smoothing it up. And as you can see, it's uh, really relaxing in the English wheel. Nice and quiet. Like I say, some people prefer to use the power hammer to make a panel like this, which is fine. Uh, to me, they're, they're very noisy. And it's very, very difficult to try and do a class and teach while you're on the power hammer. In the English wheel, we can relax and we can just continue shaping and talk at the same time. And so you can see that the panel is starting to take shape in that front section, nice and smooth. I don't have to go crazy with my smoothness because we've got a long way to go. Like I say, this is going to be a process because the whole goal in making the panel th this particular way is so everything is under control. So that's why I'm doing it methodically, stage by stage by stage. And if I get a problem and it starts not going the right direction in the shape that I want it to go in, I know what stage happened that it got out of shape and out of whack. So as you can see, I've got the panel, it's not perfectly smooth. We have a few little uh, uh, undulations in it. But so now I'm going to let the panel know, now I've shaped you up through here. I want, I want this to start coming into my catwalk. So the next stage for me is that I, I just use a bit of Jabberock. Uh, it's a nice length and I round it out the end. Stops it from uh, cutting in on stuff. But even so, uh, I think you guys in America call it, uh, it's not Jabberock, but it's um, Phenolic. It's a resin based cloth. So it's just something I utilize, have done for years. And so now, because it's in a curved manner, I can't put it into my slip roll and just slip roll this up because it would be dead flat. So the whole goal is to, to keep that bend in it. So we'll position our thing. I like to start at the, the front end, see where I'm at. And I'm just going to flex just a little bit. As I say, it's the flexibility that is what I'm looking for so that I can do this controlled and so it can come out nice and smooth without any uh, distortions. There we go. So that's what I was hoping would happen. So now as you can see, we're starting to get the manipulation. So at the same time now, now I've got shape going in this way and I'm going to start getting my shape going in through here. Oh, I think I put a little dent in it, but not to worry. Um, I'm now going to stretch this edge out so that this flares this up a little bit and then start bringing this up more. So I'm going to change from this wheel into one that's slightly broader. That will help me stretch that edge up a little bit more. So we just need to wipe that down. It's interesting, it's always humbling if you uh, make a little mistake when you're on camera. 
but uh, when you're making the panel you don't have to <coughs> converse you can focus but uh, it's like always invariably you get humbled even the best of us but there you go that's just part of it so now I'm just going to dial in the wheel to the pressure that I feel is going to be most beneficial and so this is why I have the marks on the underside I was working to the lines on here when I was wheeling so I didn't go over the line I was working on this side when I was stretching it with the mallet so I didn't go past this line so now I'm working on this side of the panel to stretch this out to bring this down and I'm going to run in stretch so I'm going to check my pressure not too bad and I'm going to start at the edge and I'm going to loosen that edge up and then I'm going to work in just a little bit on that panel and then I'm going to just do a little bit more on the front edge and as you can see now is when I start putting a little English on it see the metal will only go in the direction that you want it to go in if you manipulate it and let it know exactly oh you want me to do this exactly otherwise metal has a tendency to say you know what I'm gonna go this direction rather than the direction you want me to so it's all a case of controlling the panel to let it know exactly where you want that to go so we're just stretching in so as I stretch this edge I'm putting almost an equal and opposite stretch on both sides of the catwalk so now depending on how that catwalk starts forming up I can then determine which side of the panel I need to stretch and manipulate more than the other so as you can see with me stretching I've now put shape into it and I wheeled this area a little bit more than this area because the more I wheel on this edge the more this panel will drop over so as I stretch on this edge you can see where I stretched more in here gave it a little English to drop it over which was using the top wheel to iron out with a little pulling up but I'm also putting a little English on this hand with a very 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 slight amount of pressure to keep it down so it works and it gives you a panel that will start dropping over this one is dropping over so now I can start stretching in my catwalk again another way of doing it if we uh, see so now you can see how this is just flexing and it's going so much easier than when I first started and you could say well why don't you get a, a bar that is perfect perfect diameter you could use a tube you could use a couple of tubes I, te I tend to use uh, a radius fit and suit the front section which is narrow and then of course you see the rolling action that I was rolling to achieve the rear section so therefore I don't have to keep changing bar and because it's in a curve I'm only using a small section of the bar at a time so it's a little bit of a process but um, rolling from this line here seeing the angle of my bar and I just give it a little pressure roll it in a little pressure roll it in 
Now, that's not the only way to do this. There is another way, um, and maybe towards the end, I can really, really true this in and utilize the uh, Mittler Brother wheel with the urethane band on the top wheel. And so that will be for the next video that we can talk about the urethane band and the English wheel and how it changes the English wheel. Anyways, I hope you're enjoying the video. You can see where the catwalk is starting to come in. Very, very basic first stages. And we're just going to now go from this first stage into the third stage. As you see, as I'm getting now throws over as much. I'm needing more stretch now on this edge to throw this over more. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you next time.